Agronomic engineering, as we have said, key questions concerns which crops and cover crops are most adapted. This question is crucial because in dryland areas, uh, all crops and cover crops are, are not suited for the, types of, for the types of climate. And also, uh, another important issue is uh, which crops and cover crops combination are best suited, which crops and cover crops have little impact on grain yields, and what is the total, total village potential of biomass production. Just to illustrate it, we have, we have moved in these pictures, the down pictures, from four tons per hectare biomass, just with a single sorghum, uh, a monocropping of sorghum, we have shifted from four tons per hectare biomass to, to nine tons per hectare of, to of total biomass by associating a bracalia with the sorghum and with no effect on yield. And uh, different cover crops uh, also have been, have been screened and uh, suited in dryland areas. We can talk about Portalaria species in northern Cameroon. The, we will have on the four pictures, Crotalaria juncea, Crotalaria spectabilis, Crotalaria ocroloca, which in addition to being able to produce some more biomass, will also provide some more nit nitrogen to reduce, which will help reducing the effect of the competition effect of uh, this association. And uh, also how to avoid uh, the effect of competition is by, on these pictures, with the association of, uh, with the sorghum and maize, uh, sorghum and stylosanthes association, what we'll be doing here is to, to, uh, to install stylosanthes as a sequential cover crops we, that will permit us to avoid crop competition and then stylosanthes will continue developing in dry season and will provide sufficient biomass partly to be used in soil fertility but also as forage for animals. These types of uh, multi-use cover crops are very, are very important. And uh, the same thing, here is a picture of Northern Cameroon with uh, cotton imaging on the left part of the, our picture uh, due to the fact that cotton have been directly sold on, uh, on, uh, on covered soil, uh, while in the left hand, in the left hand, in the control plot at the left hand, uh, at, the, at the left part of the picture, the soil has just been uh, plowed, so we we'll lose time. Sometimes we may lose two or three weeks just for us to for, for the soil preparation needs. These three weeks will be the total loss in uh, in the, the vegetative uh, in the vegetative cycle of the cotton, and this will yield to a loss in in grain yield. Uh, okay, talking about socioeconomics of CA, uh, we, we we said that socioeconomics of CA consists of biomass distribution among different users. What are these users? These users are soil cover and fertility, animal feeding, domestic users as roofing and construction, and firewood. And how to do it, how to sustain these different use by providing some simple principles just as extra biomass production must be discussed within the intra-farm uses because some uses, some competition in biomass uses may occur within the farm household while others may occur between, not within the, the, the farm household, but between different farm households. That will be intra-community competition. The second step will be the need to settle a consultative framework to discuss intra-community conflict. And the third point will be the need to consider the evolution of actual rules on access to biomass, on access to crop residues. That is, we may need to shift from the open grazing rules to other type of rules which will be governing the access to biomass. Okay, let us uh, summarize different agronomic constraints according to CA in dryland areas. The first concern will be is the high agronomic risk on cropping systems due to extreme, extreme climatic conditions. There is a weak adaptive capacity of principal cover crops, that is, principal cover crops for CA implementation in humid areas and other areas may not be suited for dryland areas, or whenever they are suited, they will not provide the same biomass production. And there are also possibilities, uh, very little possibilities for, for, for practicing sequential crop, cropping due to competition. According to socioeconomic constraints, 
We'll mention the crop livestock interactions within the farm and the village, the high competition on crop residues and land tenure and available area in, in the village, and also space distribution among different activities which may sometimes not be very clear. All these <coughs> make it clear that for an optimal formulation of property rights on crop residues at a global scale on sustainable village, and also additional constraints, we may also address additional constraints as access to credits, to inputs, and also to appropriate mechanical tools that have been presented by, by Theodore. Okay, to conclude, let us say that conservation agriculture is a means for reconciling agricultural production with environment preservation in dryland areas as most fragile ecosystems. Climate change results from failure on environment con conservation and natural equilibrium. Main issues of CA concerning climate change include, first, providing alternative ways of sustainable agricultural production, and also by designing adapted cropping systems in order to ensure agricultural production in a changing environment due to climate change. But the way forward will uh, necessarily be remediating services provided by CA as a response to climate change. That is, payment for environmental services provided by CA may be the, the way forward, principally in dryland areas where value and productivity of ecosystem are the most risky. That is, the value of practicing CA in dryland areas because of this risk may not be the same as practicing CA in humid areas and other areas. And thank you very much for your attention.